In this video, we're going to take a look at the hypergraph. The hypergraph gives us a schematic view of all of the nodes in our scene file. Now, a node is simply a graphical representation of a particular tool, asset, or object within our scene. Maya is considered a node based editor. What this means is that for every tool or action or asset that we create, we get multiple nodes that are used to generate it. So let's take a look at an example here, and we'll create just a simple sphere. I'll choose Create, Polygon Primitives, Sphere. And as we've seen before, we just get a default primitive sphere in the center of our world, no transforms there. If I want to see all of the nodes that make this up, I can look at them through my hypergraph. To open it, we're going to go to Window and choose either the hypergraph hierarchy or the hypergraph connections. Now, the hypergraph hierarchy is going to give us a top view of our node. So here we are within the hypergraph, and navigating it inside of the hypergraph is just like navigating with the camera. If I want to pan around, I'm going to hold Alt and Middle Mouse. Zoom is Alt and Right Mouse. We can see that the only thing within my hypergraph window right now is my sphere. We can double check that by hitting F, which will frame my selection, or hit A to frame all. Now this is the only node that's being displayed. However, there are a lot more nodes used in the creation of this sphere. We can turn these on by going to Options, Display, and turn on Shape Nodes. When I choose that, we now see that single sphere node has now split into two nodes. And what I have here is a top node which contains all of my transformation information, and then a bottom node that contains the actual geometry. So we have a transform node on top and a shape node on bottom. We can see this identical information over here in the channel box. This is my transform node. And if we scroll down a little, we can see my shapes. There's my shape node. That's the same as this guy here. Now we also have the attribute editor, which will show us the identical information that we were just looking at. There is my transform node. There's all my transformations. And here's my shape node. And we have additional information that we can access below here. Let's just go back to our channel box. And let's return to our hypergraph and go back to Options, Display. And we're now going to turn on Hidden Nodes. Once I choose that, we now see that there are also other nodes that were hidden from us. These are our camera nodes. There's our perspective, our top, our front, and our side. They are also broken out into transform nodes and shape nodes. At any point in time, if we don't want to see the separation of this, we can go back, choose Options, Display, and just turn off Shape Nodes. The Shape Nodes don't disappear. It's simply condensing this into a single node. Now we can go further into our nodes by looking at the connections. We can get to the Hypergraph Connections by either going to Window and choosing Hypergraph Connections, or choosing this icon right here, which will show me my input and output connections. Both of these will do the same exact thing. Let's choose the icon from the hypergraph panel. I'll choose the input output connections of my sphere. So this will open up anything that I have selected. We'll choose that. And now you can see the actual nodes and their connection order that put together my sphere. Right at the beginning here is the polysphere one node. This is the node that changes the makeup of the sphere. If I return back to the transform node and scroll down, this is that node right here, polysphere one, same type of information. All right, and you can see too, when I select it here in the inputs, that it also highlights in my hypergraph. There's my shape node, and there's my transform node. Now this right here is just an initial shading node. 
this is just supplying our sphere with initial color. And it just allows us to see it in that shaded mode. This is a default node and we really can't do anything with it. We just leave that alone. Going to return back to our scene hierarchy, this button right here. Again, this is the same thing as using hypergraph hierarchy. And that will just return me to my original view that I started with. I'm going to create a second option. We'll just throw a cube out into our scene there. And we'll just translate that out a little bit. And now I have another set of nodes within my hypergraph. And there's my P cube 1. Now inside of our hypergraph, we can make very similar connections that we've already done, such as parenting. If I want to parent the cube to the sphere, I can middle mouse on the cube node. Notice my icon, my mouse changes to a plus sign. And just drag that over to the sphere. And now I create a parent-child relationship. To break that relationship, I'll just middle mouse on the cube and drag it into empty space. Now we do not have to have our nodes selected in order to do this. If I just middle mouse, Maya recognizes that I'm over a node and I can just drag in order to make that a child. We also have two different layouts inside of our hypergraph scene hierarchy. These are controlled right here. We have a free form and we have an automatic. Right now, we're in an automatic layout. What this means is that Maya will choose the order in which it displays our nodes. Right now, you can see that they're being displayed alphabetically, but Maya will choose based upon the object type and categorize them based upon their type as well. So right now, we're looking at geometry as well as cameras. Notice that the cameras are in front, even though alphabetically they should fit elsewhere. Let's switch to our freeform layout just by clicking that button. Now in freeform layout, I can grab my nodes and move them anywhere I want to. So if I parent them up, we can relocate to make it easier or more accessible for us. We'll expand that and just push these and pull these around anywhere within our empty space here. And the hypergraph is infinite, so it can get really, really large. If I want to switch back to my automatic layout, I can just simply click this icon again. Now this does not change what happens between different layouts. So if I switch back to my freeform layout, I still have the position that I moved those nodes into. So this basically gives us two different windows for viewing the same exact thing. It's a good idea to work with the hypergraph open. This way you can get used to seeing all of the nodes that get generated, where they're placed, and make sure that you're recognizing the names that get applied. As your scenes start to get larger, your hypergraph space will get really filled up, and it becomes very important that we know how to organize our hypergraph. We also want to get accustomed to using freeform and automatic layouts, as well as looking at the input and output connections that are actually building the nodes that we have. The hypergraph can get confusing very quickly due to all of the nodes that get created. Anytime you can go back and turn off a lot of these nodes by choosing display, we can turn off hidden nodes or our shape nodes. If I were to do that, you can see that really reduces the amount of clutter there. It's not taking away any information, it's simply condensing it so that we can view it more easily. The hypergraph is a bit of the hub inside of Maya, so again, it is very important that we get used to using it.